Hi everyone, it's Karen here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a brand new tutorial and I'm really excited to show you this mixed media altered bottle created with Prima Marketing Finabare products. This video tutorial is part of a YouTube hop with a few of my mixed media artist friends. We each created a video tutorial and all the links to all the videos are listed below in the description area. I'm also listing all the products that I use today and links to where you can buy them. Enjoy watching all the tutorials and make sure you check every single one as some of us are having giveaways. I'm having a giveaway and you can stay till the end of this video to see what I'm giving away. All you have to do is be a subscriber of my channel and then leave a comment below this video. I will choose a winner a week from today. It took me a while to figure out what I wanted to create for this YouTube hop. And then I thought that I wanted to create an altered bottle. So I took a bottle that I had in my house. I always save bottles just in case I ever want to alter them. And the cool thing about this bottle, it has two flat sides and therefore it's so easy to add embellishments. This is a Bailey's cream bottle. And my husband really likes Bailey's, so when he finished it, I asked him to save it for me. All I did was take some Prima Finabare Heavy Black Gesso and gave a coat of black gesso to the whole bottle. Since the bottle was black, I ended up using black gesso. However, if the bottle was a lighter color, I might have used a white gesso instead. The reason why I used the black gesso is because it would give an easier coat to the black bottle. It's harder to cover a black bottle with white gesso and vice versa too. For my technique, it didn't really matter if I used black or white gesso as you can use this technique on either one as long as you have a good cover underneath. I've created another video tutorial that it's coming up very soon where I did the same technique but I used white gesso instead. So either ones could be used for this technique. I heat set the gesso really, really well, and then I started embellishing the front of my bottle. I used one of the heart resins and then different metals, both from Tim Holtz and Prima Marketing. I save lots of different metals from different places and I collect them. And then I just go to my stash and just pick the ones I like. I buy lots of metals on sale in different stores or online and then save them for when I need them. So I just embellished this bottle. I actually did it ahead of time and embellished it and then took a picture of it. And I usually keep my phone beside me so I can refer it to the composition and I can put it exactly how I liked it. I didn't want to waste a lot of time trying to show you how I'm thinking, but what I like doing is I like having a focal point in the center where everything should center around and then have smaller embellishments around the edges. That's a great way to do a composition for any type of project and the small embellishments can be added at the end. Once I knew where everything was placed I took some heavy gel from Prima. This is the Prima Marketing Finabare Heavy Gel and I started gluing everything to the background. I took some embellishments off the bottle so I could glue them and this is why I say that it's good to have a picture reference of what you're doing so you don't forget where the embellishments are. This heavy gel is really great because it glues things on the spot and it keeps them there so things don't move while you're applying other embellishments. This heavy gel does take a long time to dry so after using it it's best to let it dry for a few hours or heat set it for a good amount of time. I glued everything to the background and once it was glued I walked away and did other things. You can also create another project in the meantime while you're letting this glue. I usually like letting it dry for 24 hours but for example when I'm teaching a class I do have people heat set it to make sure that we can work on the next medium. But you don't have to do that. You can let it dry up naturally and all you have to do is just use a palette knife to apply the glue behind the metals or the resins or any type of embellishment and then glue it to the project. 
I like having a small thin paintbrush around handy so I could use it to remove some of the glue around the embellishments. So all I do is just move it around the embellishments to remove some of that extra glue that came underneath. Make sure that you always use the same paintbrush because the glue does ruin the paintbrush and it's very hard to take off. So always use the same one and you can always buy a cheap one from the dollar store or just use the same one for, the, for everything. I tend to keep this paintbrush inside my water so that way it always stays moist and doesn't dry up. For the sides of the bottle, I picked two metal embellishments from Prima and I glued one to each side of my bottle using the same gel. I wanted to keep the decorations on the side quite simple and I made sure that I didn't put any embellishments in the back. I just wanted to leave the back bare so the main decoration is in the front of the bottle. And as you can see, I used the same paintbrush to remove some of that glue in between this embellishment because otherwise it accumulates on the sides and it doesn't look nice. It takes away from the sharp edges of the embellishment and you want the embellishment to show fully. I glued the second metal on the other side and then I added a small metal embellishment in the middle. To embellish the lid of the bottle and the top part of the bottle, I took a few Tim Holtz embellishments and I added them to the bottle itself. First I took some belt buckles and I glued one on each side of the top of the bottle. Not on the lid, but on the side of the bottle underneath the lid. For the lid, I used a small Tim Holtz knob. I really wanted to hang something from this knob, so I liked the one that had the actual hoop with it because I knew I could hang something from the top of the bottle. However, it looked too simple there on its own, so I went and got some bottle caps from Prima so I could put the knob inside the bottle caps to add a little bit more volume and interest. These are the Prima Finabare bottle caps and they come in many different sizes and they're perfect to add texture to any project. Finally, I added a buckle on the other side of the bottle because I knew I could hang things from these buckles as well. I really wanted to hang some chains. I didn't really know what I was going to do, but I knew that these three items could hang things from the sides and I really liked that look. I let the gel and the embellishments dry really well. It's really important to let these dry well so that way when you add the other mediums they don't start moving. And you can definitely heat set it. It does take a little bit longer to heat set but I just let them dry overnight and I just got busy with other projects in the meantime. I do like working on several projects as once, at once especially if they're mixed media that way I can give it some time to dry. The next step was to cover everything in black gesso. The reason why I wanted to do that is because I wanted to have an even coat over the whole bottle and all the embellishments. It's really necessary to do this when you want an even coat or an even base for, for adding the other mediums. The reason why I wanted this is because I wanted to make sure that when I add the rust paste and the paint it all looks the same because paints can react differently depending on what they're put on. So because I had some metals and resins and even glass in the background, I wanted to make sure that the coat of gesso covers everything and makes the whole background even. Once everything was covered, then I could go ahead and add any type of medium on top and it will all look the same. This can also be achieved using white gesso and you will see how I achieve the same type of technique with white gesso in the next video that I'm going to be publishing in a few days. So all you have to do is just add a good cover with the gesso all around and get into the nooks and crannies and cover everything you can cover. I do turn the bottle around to make sure that I cover everything and that way it evens out the whole bottle. The nice thing about this heavy black gesso is that it's a very thick gesso. That's why it's called heavy and that way you only have to add one layer to actually get a good coverage. Some other gessos are more liquidy and therefore you need to add 
more layers in order to be able to cover the background. So this is a great gesture if you're looking for one to cover the background on a project. I heat set the gesso really, really well because I did not want any black to get onto the next layer. Then I took uh, Jade Impasto Paint. This is a very thick paint from Prima Finnebare, and I started adding it to the background. I used one of the Finnebar paintbrush, a flat paintbrush, to take out some of the paint out of the tube, and that way I wouldn't waste as much. This impasto paint is really amazing. This is actually the first time I've ever used the impasto paints because I hadn't bought them before. But I'm really, really pleased with the results because you don't need to add a lot of layers in order to get a good coverage. Look how well it's covering the black and this is only the first layer. So I really didn't need to add any other layers to cover the black. Usually with a regular paint, you need to add a lot of layers, especially if you're trying to cover black or black paint. So it was really amazing how well it covered. It's a very thick paint, but it can also be mixed with a little bit of water and be diluted to create a more smooth surface. So all I did is just grab a little bit at a time of the paint and cover the whole bottle with the jade color, which is a turquoise kind of color. I really wanted to have a smooth surface for my background. And I could have used the patina rust effect that Prima Finaber sells, but the difference is, is that the turquoise color from that set has a little bit of a greediness to it. It has paste in like textured paste inside and that takes away from some of the embellishments so I wanted to have a smooth surface first before adding the red rust that I added later on so I could have easily used a patina rust in this case but I really wanted to add a smooth surface to the background and that's why I used the impasto paint I continued covering the sides and the back of the bottle and I even took a spray bottle that just had water in it and added a little bit of water onto my mat and used that water to dilute some of the paint so it would be smoother to apply it. So all I did is just dip my paintbrush in a little bit of water, very, very little bit, and then I could get into the nooks and crannies much easier because the paint was a little bit more diluted. I continued using the water on my mat until I was able to cover everything. So you can really help this paint dilute itself a little bit with water and that way it really gives a nice smooth finish. Of course even if you use it straight out of the tube it still gives it a beautiful coverage it's just a little bit thicker. So both work depending on where you're covering and what you're covering. I dried the impasto paint really really well to prepare it for the next layer where I wanted to add the rust effect onto my project. To do this I took the red rust paste from Prima Finaber and added it to my background. The red rust paste is one of my favorite ones and it comes in the set with the dark brown and the gold rust and I've used it in many projects on many different occasions on my videos. You can go watch a few of the videos where I used all three of them together. But in this case, I really wanted to use just a red rust to create that really nice oxidized look onto my bottle. I wanted this bottle to make it look as if it's an old bottle and it was basically rusted with time. To do this, I took my sp a small paintbrush and I added some of the red rust in between the embellishments. Then I took my water bottle, my spray bottle, and I sprayed it in those areas to make the paste and the color dilute into the background. That made it look as if the oxidized area was being dripped down as if it was really oxidized by time or by water or by the air that we see outside. But this is all done with the paste itself. I've also used the set of these pastes with the patina set which really also gives an amazing result and you can watch any of those videos me using both the rust paste and the patina paste together 
In this case, as I said, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible, so I went ahead and just used the impasto paint, only one color, and then the red rust paste to create the same effect. I added some of these oxidized drips in different areas to just make it look as if everything that the metal touched became rusted. And that helped to bring those really nice drips into the background. That's only though my first layer, because once I dry this layer, then I'm going to add more of the red rust to create those really nice rusted textures in the background. But the first step is just adding the red rust and creating the, those drips that look like as if metal was rusted for over a long period of time. Of course, I did the same thing with the sides where the belt buckles were, and also at the top where the bottle caps were. Because if you have seen bottle caps, they always look rusted, especially when they've been sitting outdoors for many years. So I really wanted it to look just like that. I heat set this first layer of red rust really, really well, and then I went ahead and added another layer. But this time, it was added with a flat paintbrush, so I could add it thicker. So I took a small flat paintbrush and then started adding it to the sides of the bottle to kind of frame the bottle. But for this technique I used a dry brush technique. So I only would add a little bit of the rust onto my paintbrush and then lightly rub it until I had no more on the brush. That way it created a very cool rusty effect in the background. So I did the framing on all the edges and then turned it around and did the same thing on the sides. That really made it look as if the rust is everywhere. I also did it at the edges of some of the embellishments in the front and even near the top of the bottle and the bottle cap. That made it look as if the rust is coming down and it highlights all the amazing texture that the bottle has. Then I went to the sides and did the exact same thing and just framed everything, especially at the edges of the bottle. My favorite part was actually doing it in the back because I didn't have any embellishments and it actually looked as if this bottle had been sitting at the bottom of the ocean for many, many years. It looked really, really cool. And I love highlighting all the texture that I put not only in the front, but also on the sides and in the back and at the top of the bottle. I love this rustic effect and I love creating it and it's one of my favorite techniques to do. These products are really, really amazing to create this look and it makes it look antique and very, very vintage, which I really love the look of it. Finally, of course, I couldn't go out without adding some of the Prima Metallique waxes from Finabear. I use two colors which are my favorite which is the vintage gold and the aged brass. They're actually very similar to each other so you could choose one or the other to add but I took both just to show you how well they look together and also just to show you that they can be used separately as well. Prima Finaber came out with these really cool stipple brushes to add the waxes or to add any type of medium. However, although you can add them with the brush, especially in the larger areas, I like using my fingers to add the wax. I find that it's really easy for me to control where I want the wax to be. I do, however, use the brush sometimes to get into the nooks and crannies where my finger doesn't fit. But I find that when I add it with my finger, I can control where it goes. And I only put it lightly so it only touches the top of the embellishments and adds highlights to the embellishments and makes them stand out. The gold looks so amazing with all the embellishment, especially in this type of project which looks very vintage. Because if you notice some of the old bottles that you can find in antique shops, they look really cool and they have those gold trims as well. Finally, as I said, I wanted to hang some chains out of the belt buckles and on the hoop on top of the knob at the top of the bottle. So I took a couple of Prima Marketing old embellishments. These actually come with their own hoop, but the hoop broke. I took some of the Tim Holtz chains and I looped 
the chains from the Prima embellishment onto the Tim Holtz one. I looped all the chains and prepared two embellishments to be hung. Some of these have some pearls and some gemstones on them and I thought it would look really nice and antique. Using pliers I took one of the embellishments and I opened up the attachment loop so I could attach it to the belt buckle on the one side of the bottle. Then I took the other one and attached it to the second side. Finally I attached the last tassel to the top of the bottle, to the hoop at the top of the bottle. All I did is just open up another one of the rings, jump rings, and I attached it to the top of the knob. I also took out two of the pearls from the side embellishment and added it to the top of the loop using a chain, another chain. I didn't like the way the pearls were sticking out on the sides, so I decided to take them out and just attach them to the top of the bottle. Thank you so much for watching and hopping along with us today. Go ahead and hop along to the next video. All the videos are listed below in the description area. If you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. Please share my video on your social media so lots of people can enjoy our YouTube hop. If you want to win my prize, please be a subscriber of my YouTube channel and leave a comment below. I will pick a winner next week on Friday, March 16th. Thank you so much and have an amazing day.